Steel Vengeance opened at Cedar Point for 2018, probably needs no introduction to any of you, but it is an RMC iBox conversion of the huge Din wooden coaster known as Mean Streak. Mean Streak opened as the world's tallest and fastest wooden roller coaster in true Cedar Point fashion in 1991. Even upon closing in September of 2016, Mean Streak was still among the world's tallest and fastest wooden roller coasters. However, it just didn't age well and gained a reputation over its 25 years of operation as one of the worst roller coasters in the world. I can certainly agree with this as I had the opportunity to ride Mean Streak many times and I never enjoyed my rides on it at all. It was long, rough, and boring. Of course, when Mean Streak's closing was announced on August 1st, 2016, we all knew exactly what was going to happen. And on August 16th, 2017, we finally got the confirmation from the park that RMC Mean Streak, now known as Steel Vengeance, would open for the 2018 season. Standing at a whopping 205 feet tall and featuring a 90 degree, 200 foot drop, Steel Vengeance absolutely towers over Frontier Town and you can see it from everywhere as you are approaching the back of the park. Steel Vengeance also has a top speed of 74 miles per hour, a track length of 5,740 feet, and a drop to brake ride time of 80 seconds. So this is a very long ride. Once you leave the station and go over the two bunny hops on the pre-lift section and climb to the 205 foot tall apex, you'll get an absolutely spectacular view of the entire peninsula around you before plummeting down the 200 foot drop. The back seat of course is the best seat to experience this drop as you are flung over the crest and you do get some pretty good ejector air. This drop is so incredible, but in all honesty, it really is outshined by many other moments on the ride in my opinion. The fact that I consider this incredible drop one of the weaker moments on the ride really speaks to what kind of ride this is though. This drop is followed by a tiny bunny hill, which you fly over at the full speed of 74 miles per hour, providing a decent quick pop of strong flow ejector. You then rise up and twist to the right in what many people refer to as a top hat element. It's basically a really large bank turn that provides some really great sustained ejector airtime. It's not one of the strongest moments of airtime on the ride, but it is a small taste of what is to come because right after this, you traverse this gigantic outer banked airtime hill, which provides probably the most sustained ejector air I've ever felt. You will get thrown out of your seat and are out of it for a good 4 seconds. Most people consider this outer bank the best moment of the ride and one of their favorite elements in general. It's not exactly my favorite part of the ride, but it is absolutely spectacular. Now, following the overbank turn is an element that I feel is really overlooked and not talked about enough. This is one of my favorite inversions I've ever experienced, and definitely my favorite of the four inversions on Steel Vengeance. That would be the Super Whippy Zero-G Roll. You sort of step up into this with an airtime hill, but then rise up and twist around to the right as you are just whipped through this inversion. What I really like though is that while all of that is getting thrown at you, you're also getting, you guessed it, some really good airtime. You really feel the zero G's as you are tossed around at a ridiculous pace. Following the zero G roll is one of the only moments of this long ride where you will get a bit of a breather, at least compared to the rest of the ride, as the train twists to the right and does this mini wave turn, but then right back into insanity as the train flips you upside down into this inversion which is referred to as a zero G stall, even though it doesn't really stall you at all. This inversion is pretty cool, but one of the least memorable elements of the ride in my opinion. But it still has some great whip to it, and it sort of acts as a double down as well since you roll out of it going down, and then hit an airtime hill as you bottom out from the zero g stall. And then comes the absolutely most brutal part of this ride, which is this insane gigantic double up that twists you to the left and abruptly ejects you out of your seat all at the same time. The airtime here is brutal, which can be a good thing, but I will warn you, if you end up getting stapled, which unfortunately I've experienced on a few occasions with those bulky RMC restraints, this double up will be quite painful. When you hit that airtime hill up into the mid-course brake run, you will feel an especially strong jolt of ridiculous ejector airtime. The mid-course brakes, even if they are on, are never that noticeable, if they are on at all. So these brakes won't really affect the rest of the ride, besides maybe this drop off of the mid-course. If the trims hit, the airtime on this drop won't be too strong even in the back seat, but if those trims are off, this drop is probably one of the best moments of airtime on the ride in the back seat. It is especially whippy in the back, as there is this little twist to the left, so if you are in the back, you will get flung to the left and into this drop so abruptly. 
You then go into this double up, which features a sharp twist going into it. And then this moment, which is one of my favorite parts of Steel Vengeance. A twisted airtime hill, where you will get insane ejector as you are banked outward, and then a pretty big plunge into the massive wooden structure, providing a really spectacular head chopper effect with the supports. You hit a steeply banked airtime hill, which provides amazing laterals, twist into a fast-paced zero-g roll, then travel outside of the wooden structure, and hit two good back-to-back -back airtime hills. This is where you'll fly back into the wooden structure yet again for the amazing final lap of Steel Vengeance. After a great head chopper effect, the train hits this ridiculous sideways airtime hill, which provides yet more great ejector air. By the way, get used to me talking about ejector airtime if you haven't already, because you will then hit the final inversion, another strong 0G roll, before hitting this quick sharply overbanked turn to the left, going out of the wooden structure, and then hitting this grand finale, which I like to refer to as the airtime assault. You will be thrown excessive amounts of yet more aggressive ejector airtime back to back to back to back, before popping up into the final brake run, bringing your 1 minute 20 second drop to brake ride time on Steel Vengeance to a smoldering end. Steel Vengeance is a ride that is quite frankly unmatched by anything else I've experienced. Nothing has really even come close to topping it. One thing that the ride really has going for it is the length. You have a full 80 seconds of prime ride time, drop to final brakes, which is packed with non-stop speed and negative Gs. This is not the most intense ride when it comes to positive Gs though, so I guess if you're someone who really strongly values sheer positive G-force over anything else in your coasters, this may not exactly be your kind of ride. But Steel Vengeance is just packed with really high quality elements throughout and doesn't have any real dead spots. The closest thing would be the mid-course which you usually just fly right through anyway, and maybe that mini wave turn which turns you back around into the stall. Of course, this is a glass smooth ride as well, being made by Rocky Mountain Construction. These iBox coasters provide the smoothest tracking rides I've ever felt, I would have to say. That being said, there are some people who really don't like the bulky RMC restraints, which feature a heavy lap bar and shin guards. And I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of these restraints anymore either. In my video about my favorite and least favorite restraints, I talked about how I thought these restraints were perfectly fine, and I actually rather like them. But more recently, I have come to realize just how much these lap bars can ruin a world class ride. A couple weeks back, I got a couple of really painful rides on Steel Vengeance because I got stapled, and it's not hard to get stapled with these restraints either. Just try to keep your knees against those shin guards if you can, so you aren't in sheer pain for the entire ride. Steel Vengeance's airtime is great, but that brutal airtime will be brutally painful if you get stapled. It will come down sometimes during the ride too, especially during that finale, so be aware of that. I've heard many taller people complain in particular about the shin guards, so if you're especially tall, be aware of that. Ultimately, though there are some things that could be adjusted a bit to make Steel Vengeance a more comfortable ride, I really feel it is just nitpicking because Steel Vengeance is about as perfect as a roller coaster can get in my opinion. The pacing is relentless from beginning to end, and it just feels like it never ends. I hear many enthusiasts complain about several notable coasters out there being just a bit too short for their liking, often stating that they could use one or two more elements, myself included. Steel Vengeance does not suffer from that one bit. The ride time is extremely satisfying, being nearly one and a half minutes from drop to break with no dead spots. It is also my favorite coaster I've ridden by far, no question. Nothing else has really given it much competition for that title as far as I'm concerned. With that being said, it shouldn't really be a shock that I am going to give Steel Vengeance none other than a perfect 10 out of 10 score. It has speed and incredible pacing, strong ejector airtime throughout, and of course it is a very long fulfilling ride experience. This is definitely a must ride if you are a coaster enthusiast. There isn't really much else like this out there. It's kind of in its own league when it comes to elite coasters. Let me know your thoughts of Steel Vengeance. If you haven't ridden it yet, what are you most looking forward to when you eventually do ride it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Of course, be sure to like this review if you found it helpful, subscribe to my channel for much more exciting roller coaster and amusement park content, and like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, as well as following me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.